All right, here I am. I'm back. Okay. So I'll start with the softballs, okay? The nice fat fat pitches. Um, okay. <laughs> so what do you um, what do you hope will be different this year? What are you most excited about? So excited about a couple of things. Number one, I'm excited that we're talking about opening schools without having to reduce something, eliminate something, cut something, close something. So I'm excited about that. So I'm excited that for the first time since I've been here, we are having a conversation about opening schools on time with the same um, resources that we closed the prior year with. I mean, so that's, that in and of itself is exciting. Um, notice we're not talking yet this year about do we open, do we not, is legislation going to pass, is it not, will we have sufficient revenue or not. So the fact that we don't have that conversation is um, it, it already feels different. I'm, I'm also very excited about uh, the fact that um, with all of the principals that we hired, um, over the last several years that now there's now over a 90% retention rate of those individuals who have um, taken on the leadership roles of our schools. So very excited that it, it seems to be some stability, particularly at the principal level, um, at, um, at our school. And a, a large majority of the individuals that we hired this year are um, graduates of the Philadelphia uh, school district, uh, and so we, we are thrilled about that, and um, I'm looking forward uh, to this year, to the work this year that is most exciting to me, and that's ensuring equity, and as I talk about equity, I'm thinking about um, defining equity as great schools close to where children live, period, and that's our work. We have to ensure that um, children have great public school options close to where they live. That means if a child, um, we have some children now who may have aptitude in the arts or, um, or may have an AP potential who don't have access to those opportunities simply because of where they live. And so um, we're working so that, destiny, that zip code no longer defines destiny for our children, particularly the options that those children have available, the public school options that those children have available to them. So that's our work. Um, and we've already begun to um, do some things around um, the equity point. Number one, how we've organized ourselves to ensure that there's a deep expertise around the categories of students that we serve. How uh, organize yourselves, what? I, I missed that. Organize yourselves, oh. how? Organize ourselves to be experts. Experts. Expert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, based on the categories, of, the different categories of students we serve. And, and what I mean by that is that we have some students who uh, are, are adjudicated youth. We have some students who have not done well in traditional or comprehensive schools. We have other schools who want special options. Um, we have another set of children who may be interested in the arts or in science or in engineering. And we have categories of schools to serve them. And then with, as we think about that, the vast majority of the children are still in neighborhood schools. So our work to improve neighborhood schools becomes equally important. Um, now, you said that you don't have a... Um you know, you, you don't have you don't have to worry about further cuts, but you know, you're, there's still the the status quo. It's still you know, status quo isn't great. So, how um, I mean, you know, can you be a little more specific about like what like if you're you know if you're the typical kid who lives in North Philly and you know you're interested in the arts, what, how is that gonna you know what are they gonna see you know now that um, that they didn't see last year? Well, I, I, I will say this, um, Dale, that, you know, we still have on the table, you're right, I'm not worried, of, I mean, we're, we're going to open on time, we're going to open with the resources we closed with a year ago. And, but every principal also did a budget based on the investments 
should we get the additional, should we get any additional money from Harrisburg? And many of those investments are things like the things you just described. So they are expanding the arts, it's expanding counseling, um, it's expanding uh, library services, um, it's expanding individuals that can work with children who are, um, who are, uh, who need more attention with um, helping them to learn to read. It's, it's all of these things. It's more AP classes. Uh, it's more art and music classes. And so we've seen that with what individuals have asked for in terms of those investments. And so, you know, if we're able to get any of those investments, you know, the, I've always said the vast majority of those monies are going to um, respond to those things that principals have put um, have asked for if, in fact, we're, we're successful in getting that revenue. Okay. Um, and I will say also, I will say this, Dale, that, you know, the whole notion of destiny, not the, I mean, this zip code not defining destiny. Right. So next year, it's a couple of things that all schools, all children in all schools will experience around this whole point of equity. Um, next, it's the next um, SRC meeting. We're going to have several resolutions. One resolution is a partnership with Junior Achievement. That partnership will provide the district with the opportunity to ensure that all third graders visit a college campus. So that's one example. And it's not going to be based on where children live. We want all third graders to have that opportunity, just to mm -hmm. get them onto a college campus so that they can see themselves there and see this as something that they can do. So that's one example. Another example is that We've seen over the past several years, because we no longer provided the PSAT to all students, that we've seen a decline in who's taking the PSAT. We've seen a decline by 50% in the students who are taking the PSAT. But that's even more significant, the, the declines are even more significant among African American children and Latino children. And so this year, um, uh, with a, through a partnership with College Sports, we're going to be offering the PSAT for every 9th, 10th, and 11th grader. Um, and that's going to be during the school day at no cost to the student. So those are a couple of examples of things that we're doing systemically to address this equity point. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I think that, you know, that is those are things in addition to all of the investments that the principals have requested. Okay. Um. So, I'm, I'm, I'm also excited that we're going to be opening uh, a new advanced manufacturing right. program mm -hmm. at, um, in Franklin. That's very exciting considering advanced manufacturing is something um, that is going to be in a lot of the city over the next several years. I would really love to expand that so that all of the children who are interested have opportunity for apprenticeships or internships in high school. And that's what, that's what we're trying to get. Um, and that's going to take uh, a coordinated effort uh, um, across the, all of labor, the school district, career technical education, the business community. I think so, but that's what we're after as we move forward on this work. Right. Um, yeah, I we have a whole all article all on all that. All about, what? Hey, hey, Dale, I want all of our students to have the experience that the young men at Randolph had who completed the wellness program. Right. Um, those young men, those young men, all finished with the certification in welding. Um, those young men all finished with a job opportunity when they graduate from high school. Um, and I want all of the, our children who are interested in taking and following that path to have those same opportunities. Right. So that's what, that's where the program like the advanced manufacturing begins to help us. Right. As we move forward. Well, the theme the theme of the guide this year is CTE and. We have all that stuff in there. We have all that stuff about advanced manufacturing. I'll mention it in this story, but I don't want to dwell on that. I want to talk about other stuff, okay? Because we already have all that stuff. Um, so, um, so you've reshuffled the top administration. Um, so why did you do that and how will that impact schools? And the other thing is that that figure that Regina used of $1.2 million adding to the payroll, we're not sure that's correct. We're wondering. That's not correct. Yeah, so... 
But, you know, so why did you reshuffle the top administration? How will that impact schools? And, you know, did it result in a net cost uh, to the district um, in any way that you can tell? Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. So if people read the action plan, I mean, the reshuffling of the district, I mean, all of that was in the, in the action plan, that we wanted to become deeply expert in the types of children that we were serving. And, mm -hmm. our, and the, the deeply expert is, if in fact we have a set of schools who are serving children who need something very different, we wanted a level of expertise there that could work with that group of schools. Um, and so the reshuffling was really um, the the was really operationalized in the action plan, um, so that individuals who are working with schools are deeply expert in types of things that those schools need to do in order to mm -hmm. benefit children. Why is that important? That's important because um, our school leaders are the, the most important people in our district. And us, us having the ability to develop, support, um, and, um, and resource them, then, I mean, that's one of the most important things that we can do. And that's why we, that's why we wanted to, number one, lower the span of control in terms of how many individual people we're working with in school. Mm -hmm. And number two, make sure that if you're working with a certain category of schools that you are experts in what those that category of schools were trying to support. Um, and so that's why individuals like Chris Lehman is leading our innovation work. That's why um, individuals who work in on ed are leading the opportunity network, um, and that's why um, someone who has done turnaround work before is leading turnaround work. But I will add, but it also means that our neighborhood schools, um, now there are fewer neighborhood schools in each network so that our principal, so that the assistant superintendent could provide direct and continuous support to those principals because their work, uh, and most important work, is making sure that we improve um, our neighborhood schools since the vast majority of our children are still in the neighborhood schools. And we do that by developing and supporting the principals. Okay. Um, uh, and, and, and uh, the, here's, the, here's the last thing I wanted to say on that. Okay. And, and for three years here, I've been running a bureaucracy um, that was departmental and de departmentally facing. In other words, it meant that I had the I had HR at the table, I had IT at the table, I had academics at the table, um, and now what I want is to have schools at the table because our work is really designed to be re in response to what schools need. And, and I need those individuals at the decision-making table so that whatever we decide is in response to the things we're hearing directly from schools. And so that was a part, of, that was also a part of the reshuffling of, um, of the senior team. Okay. And the thing about the cost, I don't know whether you can speak to that. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but is there a, you know, is it, is there some, something general you can say about it? Yeah, I mean, so, the, the, so it still represents 3% of our, our administration still right. represents 3% of our budget. And that's one of the low, that's, it's not the lowest, the lowest in the, I mean, one of the lowest in the country. Mm -hmm. I would also add that between grants and the operating budget, it wasn't 1.2 million, that I do know. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, I mean, we could, we could work on what that amount was, and, and Fernando could get that to you. Okay, I don't know how you know important, but that that's been pu that number's been published. So if there was a different number to publish, yeah, we would do it. Just you know? added the cost of all of those positions, not thinking right. the positions, the, not acknowledging positions that have been eliminated and right. that we're not filling. Right, right. Not acknowledging what's going to be supported by grants versus the other. Right, I, that's what we have, that's what we figured. Okay, um, so what difference has the new governor made so far for for Philadelphia? And related to that is there's going to be a new mayor and a reshuffled city council with at least one new member who's, you know, very, uh, you know, as you know, is um, really um, involved in the education issues. So, so what are your 
What's been the impact and what are your hopes and expectations with this, you know, changed political landscape? Well, I will, I'll start with the governor first because I do think that, um, you know, for the first time since I've been here now, there is real talk about um, providing school districts across the Commonwealth with the resources that they need and restoring some of the pretty, some of the drastic cuts that have happened over the past several years. And so I will say that with the new governor, I mean, and, oh, oh, by the way, he's been in Philadelphia already, um, you know, a number of times visiting schools and communities. Um, and so I'm excited about what they're trying to accomplish. Um, very thankful that um, he's holding firm on getting us additional revenue um, for educating the, educating the children here in Philadelphia and across the Commonwealth. And so um, I just hope that there is quick resolution to this budget impact because while we're starting schools on time, we will quickly run out of cash if in fact this problem is not resolved. Quickly is how quickly? Uh, you know, we think that right now we're good through um, mid October. But I'm, I, I will worry if in fact nothing is done by the end of September um, about how long we can, how long a cash will last. And I think um, Fernando mentioned this figure to me once before, that if you have to wind up borrowing money or something, um, it, it would cost a million dollars probably. It would cost the district about a million dollars to do that. And you know we already have a borrow. Oh, really? You know, we just did the trans. That's where we operated from. Uh -huh. but, so that bit, but you always do a tram, though, right? Right, but I mean, but, but now we're going to have to... The, I think to this point, if we and we weren't planning to draw down all of the trends, mm -hmm. and if we draw down all of it, it will cost us about a million dollars. If we draw down all of the five hundred million dollars, um, and I'm not so sure we'd be able to do another one if, in fact, there's a budget in that, because it, I mean, because creditors are going to want to know that they <laughs> will be getting their money back. Right. All right. Um, so. And the, so, and the so, mayor so, thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the mayor, I mean, the, you know, both candidates are talking about education, and I think that's very important. I have um, had an opportunity to talk with both individuals, um, and, and, and both are very aware of the challenges and what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, and, and I think it's important um, to continue to talk about things like pre-K and expansion of pre-K, how we brand neighborhoods. I mean, I think those things are extremely important. Say that again, um, how you brand neighborhoods? What do you mean? Yeah, how, how we rebrand neighborhoods and brand neighborhoods and schools um, and so that we have schools that are responsive to the needs of children in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm looking forward to working with um, the new mayor um, and, um, and working with, uh, and we will continue to work with city council on these very important matters. I mean, I think, as you indicated, at least one candidate is very well versed on education and, and matters associated with education. Um, and so, you know, I think that, you know, I, 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 I think that's a good thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that you know, the more we have individuals who are concerned about education and the quality of education for all students, I mean, um, I mean, the, 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 the better the chances are that we will have the ability to provide um, sufficient resources. Okay. Um, now, now to the tougher questions, I guess. Um, so, you know, since you came, I guess there was one extension of the PFT contract, but there seems to be this toxic relationship. There has been, I mean, I guess it's not a legal or official impasse, but sure sound. Sure, it seems like one. Um, the principals have been filing grievances. Um, so, to what uh, it's, you know, so what are your, what do you think is going to happen in that regard? Um, you know, because what happens is teachers don't trust you. I mean, you heard the other night. I mean, the the SRC meeting got a little, I, I, got a little rough. Yeah, I heard from, I think, hey, Dale, I heard from retired people last. That I mean, at the last meeting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but let's be clear. I, I, I right. I meet with teachers. Right, but you know, I I, so I hear from teachers. Okay, so you meet with teachers. So despite, are you, are you saying that despite the 
difficulties with, you know, the fact that there's been an inability to reach a contract for three years plus now, um, you know, and, and all the legal fights and the et cetera, um, you're saying that you still have good relationships with individual teachers that you don't feel like they're against you? No, no, no. I mean, I, so, look, I want, I want to get teachers something as much as teachers want to get something. So I think that, that point is clear. So, and as a matter of fact, I've said now, even in a couple of, um, even in a couple of places this week, to new teachers, um, to existing teachers, that my goal this year is to get them something, period. Um, and so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So we're all after the same thing. I've always submitted that. Um, we, we don't pay a teachers nearly enough. Um, but given the economic environment that we're in, we have to all make some um, sacrifices in order to edu continue to educate our children. But I will also be the first one to say they've gone long enough in this kind of situation, and we have to do something for them. Now, I, now no one feels good about the fact that we haven't been able to resolve the contract, but I want to separate my respect for teachers um, and all of the work and the appreciation that goes into everything that they do every day, I want to I want to distinguish that from our negotiations. Those are two different things. Um, I meet with teachers. We have listening sessions with teachers, and so I mean, and the whole purpose for doing that was to hear from teachers themselves what they need um, and and what their frustrations are and what we could do better. Um, and so I, I'm not suggesting that 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 relationship could be can't be improved, but what I'm saying is everyone's frustrated with the fact that we don't have a contract. So why, um, why is and, it? I mean... And me included. Right. So why do you think it's... Um, what's... What... You know, how would you describe... Um, what, what... Yeah, I mean, it's negotiations. I mean, there, I mean, there are the things that we feel are very important and the things that, you know, the other side feels that are very important. And... and and so that's been the process that we've been working through. Um, and so, I, I mean, I think that is, you know, that's a part of negotiations. But as I, as I just said a minute ago, you know, I'm, I'm committed to getting teachers something. Um, and, you know, I have to figure out a way to do that. And this is, you know, we cannot go on in perpetuity um, with this current state because that doesn't, that doesn't, indicate an appreciation for what teachers are doing in classes. I, I, I want to make clear, though, the point is those individuals who are speaking at the meeting, most of those individuals were retirees, um, and, but that, that doesn't represent, I, I don't feel like that's a fair representation of all teachers. Okay. Um. But um, yeah, yeah, I know you are. the The last subject is um, uh, is charters. Well, I, I which is related to the idea that you know people, some people anyway, seem convinced that you're you know here to privatize, and that's been your task, and that's what you've been trying to do the whole. You know, you might want to just speak in general to that. But in, in terms of specifics regarding charters, there's a new atmosphere now with the change in the law. Uh, I am going to talk to the charter person, but are you expecting, you know, more to close? You expect expansion? And, and you had said a few years ago, I guess it was, or not long after you came here, I remember you saying something about you feel like charters had reached a saturation point. So I'm just wondering if you could just talk a little bit about that and what you expect on that front this year and also, um, you know, the whole issue of, you know, your goal is to privatize. How would you, you know, like how do you respond to that? That, I mean, that's, that's kind of silly, actually. Yeah, because if my goal was to privatize, we'd be privatized a lot more than what's been privatized here. And a lot of what's been privatized was done long before I got here, Dale. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's kind of silly. And, I mean, and here's the other thing. I mean, and so I am looking for, a, I mean, a honest conversation about, you know, what is high quality? How do we know? When do we know? What do we use to measure that? What do we do about it when schools are not? Um, and, and so I think I would much rather um, talk less about what sector it is. That's kind of an old, stale argument, and really begin talking about what is quality, and what is of high quality, and how do we use the SDR to give us information about all schools 
um, and whether or not they are of the sufficient quality to make sure that we have great schools close to where children live. Mm -hmm. That's a very different conversation than, you know, how many of X school versus Y school. Um, and I, I think that's what we're trying to do. I mean, the reason we did the substitute thing was because four out of every ten classes didn't have an adult on, on I mean, in, during the school year. So, I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's, we're trying to solve a problem. That's not the intent to promise I mean, the labor you mean four out of every ten vacant classrooms, or vacant, cla vacant, class right. four out of every yep. ten classes that had a teacher absent that day, not four out of ten classes in the whole school district. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. I was thinking that, but I didn't say that. Right. Right. Four okay. Four out of ten, um, if all of the vacancies each day right. did not happen at all. Right. So thank you. So, so that's why you're doing that because you're trying to solve a problem, right? We're trying to solve that problem. I mean, that's not. I mean, no one would submit that that should be. I mean, that that is acceptable. And so, why all of a sudden people are going? You know, well, wait a second. You're trying to privatize. Wait, wait, wait. Where were you talking? Where were you when we were saying we're trying to solve this problem? Um, and so, submit a plan for solving this problem. Um, instead of saying, hey, oh, he's just trying to profit on because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we still had four out of every ten vacancies each day did not have a stone. And the thing about charters, um, they finally have a head of a charter office. Um, there's the law, so there's going to be more applications, um, I guess. Um, there was the, the, other da you know, the other night with... Um, with Nueva, which is kind of an interesting case, uh, what happened there. You have an SRC member who's opposed to, chair, who's opposed to any new charters, uh, on, you know, until the financial thing. So how would you best characterize your position and your expectation for the coming year regarding charters? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, uh, the SRC, I mean, the charter office reports to the SRC now, but right. I mean, it's, it's, part of, it, it's part of what we're trying to do to have a great school close to where children live. I mean, it is, you know, I stand by my point of, of the, the reaching a saturation point. I do think we have enough children in, um, in, that, in that sector. Now we have to talk about how do we improve the quality of the seats available in that sector. I am very concerned about um, the, just having to accept new applications um, and then being bogged down with all that's associated with all of those new, considering those new applications, and then the appeals. And I think the, I mean, and I think that, you know, it, regardless of, you know, whatever we come up with, with, with um, to address this issue, this issue is not going to be addressed until we address this funding associated with um, with charter versus district across Pennsylvania. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. I mean, if all things are equal, we're looking for quality schools. The problem is all things are not equal given the current funding structure. So that's what we have to address. Okay. I won't take up any of, of, of more of your time. Uh, and I'll, just, I'll just add, I'll add that I'm very excited about Stonlin and Kesa in the charter office. Uh -huh. I think um, she, she's done this work in, in bigger places, in larger places. She understands author, quality author, authorization, um, authorizing. And so I think she's going to be um, a, a, a gigantic help um, at the school district around the authorization, the quality authorization of charter. Okay. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you, Dan. All sure. right, take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye.